Hello everybody, it is Dr. Steve with another episode of Core Wellness TV and today we're going to talk a little bit about mindset and the ability to rewire and re-bend the neural circuits in your mind. And the reason this all came up for me is today we had our parent-teacher conferences with our two kids, they're 10 and 6, and uh, we went to Benjamin's conference and after his conference uh, his teacher Kyla said, Benjamin, why don't you go show them what you did in our scientific, in our, when we did our scientific experiment, show them how you learned about the scientific method. And he showed us the, you know, the hypothesis in the experiment and whether the hypothesis was correct or not, and then a statement defining what he learned about the science experiment. And what they did was they looked at whether objects were rigid, flexible, or elastic. Now, a fork, a marble, a, um, a fork, a marble, a, um, a rubber ball, and Play-Doh. And we had to determine by feeling and what, you know, for instance, if, uh, if a marble, if you press on a marble, it's hard, it doesn't bounce back, it's pretty rigid, right? Okay, that's the marble. Also the fork, uh, pretty rigid, but you can make a case for pinching the forks together and there is some elasticity there, so maybe that has both. Um, Play-Doh. What happened? Well, we'll leave Plato for last. Let's talk about um, that was rigid. What about um, elastic? Elastic is like um, well, in the in the experiment, they had a ball, like a rubber ball, and they pressed on it and went boing, it bounced back, right? So it was elastic. It bounced back, like a rubber band is elastic. It bounces back. And the last thing was Plato. Now Plato, what do you think Plato was? Plato was considered plastic. And the definition of plastic is it can be moved and then when it moves to that new position it can stay there. It has plasticity. That's the new word for how the mind works. We find out that our brain is plastic. It can be changed permanently. Motor programs, the way we move, can be changed permanently. But what happens is people basically have elastic minds. Whenever they try to make a change they start doing things for a while and snap. It snaps back to the what they believe in their mind. It's it's all about beliefs and how deeply ingrained these programs are. Let me use a couple of examples here. Uh, this may represent this piece of this is a piece of cardstock or a piece of construction paper. Okay, this might represent a belief that is uh, is held in your mind or a movement program that is in your brain and the way you range the way you ra the excuse me the way you raise your arm for instance let's use that as a movement program which is simply a neural circuit in your brain it's a belief about in your brain about the way you raise your arm up so every time you raise your arm up to get a glass out of a cabinet that's a program that program is plastic let me show you what i mean it can be this just like this little piece of paper once you bend it and you try to change the programs for instance instead of correcting instead of raising your arm like this when you're with your shoulder shrugging we want to try and make you raise your arm with your shoulder blade nice and depressed so your shoulder blade doesn't shrug when you raise your arm because that place that places stress on your neck and it creates trigger points and headaches and even carpal tunnel syndromes and all kinds of stuff so we have to change the way we move that program we move that arm so that we have to change the program Good thing for us that these programs in our mind, these neural circuits in our brain, are all plastic. Thoughts, all plastic. Beliefs, all plastic. Some of you have rigid beliefs, and if you have rigid beliefs, change can never happen. Plasticity can never happen. You have to be open to change and understand that that's the, the way the brain is. That's the new science. The brain is plastic. Programs are plastic. So we teach you how to do that correctly. We teach you first how to anchor your body down, anchor your center, breathe correctly, give yourself a nice strong foundation, and lo and behold, you're going to raise your arm with a different pattern. And you may do it like this for a few times, but after a while you'll start doing it correctly. Now just like the paper, you're going to, after the first time you do it, uh, alright, it's going to whoop, bounce right back. Your brain's going to want to go right back to the way it was. But guess what you got to do? Uh, okay? Now this time, oh, now it's got a little bend in it. It's staying, right? Uh, oh, and even more bend. Now what do you think will happen as I continue to do this over and over, and I did it ten times? 
a hundred times, a thousand times. I did it more effectively. I paid more attention to it. I used a lot of, uh, uh, I put a lot of effort and energy into it. Pretty soon, what's going to happen? You know what? Your pattern is going to stick. So now when you raise your arm, it's going to be a more efficient and strain-free pattern. And you're not going to have the same headaches. You're not going to have the same neck tension. You're not going to have that grinding and, and gritting when you turn your neck. That's an example of a pattern that can be changed. Okay. Now this is a pretty. This is a pattern that can be changed pretty easily. Okay. Uh, depending on how long it's been there. But um, so if it's been there for a little while and you maybe you've hurt your shoulder and you've been compensating for uh, eight or ten weeks while you rehabilitated your shoulder. It happened with me with my left shoulder. I separated it skiing down a hill and I had a, I had it in a sling for six weeks like this and I had to relearn how to use my and I still to this day have a little bit of that pattern left because it was such a strong program because I couldn't move it for so long. So some people have patterns if it's there for years and years and years, it's more like, uh, so this is a clinical medicine kind of a binder, and this thing is really hard, okay? But it still has the potential to be plastic. Now, I'm not going to bend and, and break this uh, book, but do you see how there's a little, I can get up here close. When I do this, there's a little bit of bend. Hey, it's got a little bit of leeway. So I'm going to have to work harder. I'm going to have to do physical releases sometimes to break up the tissue. I'm going to have to really focus day in and day out. It's going to take longer, but it's still plastic. That's the message I want you to take home today, is your brain is plastic. Programs are just that. They're programs. They're just programs. Nothing is real. It's all just programs in your mind. So, reprogram your brain. Reprogram some new, new, new movement patterns. That's what this coaching course is all about that we're doing. That's what this, um, the, the coaching course is going to talk about how to change your mind about things, about the way you eat, about the way you sit, about the way you start a lawnmower, about the way you stand, about the way you walk, about the way you reach and get a glass out of a cabinet. All these things need to be reprogrammed and that's what this is all about. So, leave me a comment. Tell me what program you need to change. Okay, what program do you need to change? Post it in the comments below, and I'd love to hear about it. All right? So, and if you're not on the early notification list to get the course, get on there. You're going to, there's going to be some nifty bonuses for the, the first people who get on board. So, uh, we're going to have some fun with this. I'm looking forward to it. The goal is to have it out by the end of September, and I'm pushing for even earlier than that. So, stay tuned, and until next time, keep thinking good thoughts, eating good food, and keep moving functionally. And keep doing it over and over again, because that's what changes the programs. See you next time.